Oh my god, I'm tired of talking. <laughs> I talked so much. I have to edit so much of this video. Hi everyone, it's Maria and welcome to my channel. I'm a marine biologist and I am currently finishing my PhD in marine microbiology, which is a field in marine biology. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about how my perspective towards biology and marine biology and my career changed throughout time. So pretty much since I remember, I love the ocean. And since I remember finding out what marine biology is and that this is a career you can actually have, the, immediately that was the thing I said I wanted to be when I grew up. And when it came the time for me to, to start university, I have to explain to you a little bit how the system works in Portugal and a lot of European countries. When you enroll in a uni, you don't only enroll at uni, you enroll in a specific bachelor. And usually these bachelors have already the whole program assigned to you. You have no optional courses. You cannot choose the courses you will take. All the courses have already been chosen for you for that specific program. For instance, I applied for the Bachelor in Biology in the University of Lisbon. And everyone who goes to this bachelor has the exact same courses for the first two years of the bachelor. When I started applying to uni, I did think about other other possible bachelors I could take but in the end I thought and I after also talking to friends and family everyone said Maria you are the ocean person whenever I think of you and what you're gonna be doing in the future you're gonna be swimming with dolphins <laughs> and my expectations going into my bachelor were that I was going to better understand what it means to work as a biologist or as a marine biologist. And that didn't happen. I really felt that my, especially the first two years of my bachelor were kind of an extension of my high school in the way things were taught. You had a teacher in front of the class teaching, show, so showing slides, you can eventually obviously ask questions and then you get these textbooks and you have to learn from them and then you have an exam. We also had some practical courses, but not many, not for sure, not as many as I would have hoped. And I thought that once when I was going into uni, that I was going to experience all the adventures that I've always associated with biology and marine biology, and that it would reinforce what I wanted to do in my future. And that really did not happen. <laughs> During those two years, I had very general courses that back then I thought, why am I even learning this? Why do I have to learn chemistry and physics again and math when this has nothing to do with biology? Even though now I do recommend people studying those, I think it's useful and I think it's good to have knowledge in other fields out of biology, other sciences. But back then, that was not my feeling. In terms from a personal standpoint, my university was very fun. I made a lot of friends, I went to a lot of parties, and that was really uh, reflected in the grades of my first year because they were horrible. So I ended up repeating the whole first year because having bad grades was really against my nature. Uh, and I knew that in Portugal, if I wanted to apply for a master's, my grades were important. So I repeated the first year, almost all the courses. At the same time, I started already also doing half of the second year. After all of this kind of hinders a bit my passion for marine biology, not for the ocean per itself. So I still love the ocean. I started doing ocean marine sports and I still loved snorkeling and learning about marine life but as a career I, I started like okay i am not really understanding what's happening here like I, i'm very confused as to what does a biologist do after all and i started doubting if this was really what i wanted and that's also when i started hearing a lot of people from every side saying it's so difficult to find a job in biology especially in marine biology especially in portugal which is where I had been by then almost all my life. And all this started like getting into my mind and I said, should I change to a field in which like I have, might make more money and then I make exploring the ocean like my hobby. Like all these things started crossing my mind throughout my bachelor. Uh, at some point I started being a bit more responsible <laughs> and talking to some professors of mine 
and asking if I could join in some projects, if I could participate in some of their research. So I would get a bit, a bit more of a sense of what you do in biology, because I was sure that it was not just reading books and memorizing things and being in the lab. We had some lab work actually in, the, in the, those first uh, years of uni, but field work, zero. That's, and that's what I wanted back then. That's the main thing I wanted. Then I started uh, joining some professors of mine and their teams in some of their field work. And I started like, okay, wait, this is actually kind of cool. Like the people are cool, the feeling, like the whole participating in a research project. I liked that environment. The idea of becoming a marine biologist started to come back to me. After the two year, first two years of my bachelor, which I took three years because I repeated almost the first entire year. On the third year, I could finally choose marine biology as my specialization. And that's when things shifted a little bit because we did have a bit more field work. And I said, okay, like this is, I like the ocean. I like biology and I, I'm, I'm sure now that I really want to work with something related to the ocean. So when it came time to choose my master's, I chose marine ecology, the master's of marine ecology in the same university where, where I did by my bachelor. This decision, oh man, I have no idea how many hours and days I spent searching things in the internet about possibilities of masters but after searching and researching and reading in the end i've decided also for money reasons um i've decided to stay in the same university and do my masters there <laughs> okay so during my masters it was divided in this way the first year was filled with courses and the second year was dedicated solely mostly to or mostly i have still a couple of courses but mostly to your master thesis the first semester I don't even really remember what happened in my, the first semester. That's how forgettable the courses were. I remember one that I really enjoyed because I was so surprised, which was remote sensing and geographic information systems, which is basically using satellite data to make maps and images and understand. Yeah, things. Then the second semester of my first year was Erasmus. Erasmus is an exchange program here in Europe. I don't, maybe now it's extended to the m more parts of the world, I'm not sure. But in which uni uh, universities from different countries have agreements and then they exchange students between each other. And I was six months in Denmark in Aarhus University. From a party personal point of view, it was great. <laughs> From a career point of view, they didn't have any marine biology courses. So almost all the courses I took were wildlife conservation, which I really enjoyed, by the way. Taught in this beautiful location in the winter, was covered with snow, there were deer running around outside, it was just beautiful. Oh, I did have fish biology, which was fun. I actually enjoyed all the courses, but they were not really marine related, except for that one that was fish biology. It did not change my wanting or not wanting to become a marine biologist, really. During that time, I met my current boyfriend in Denmark. We started dating, that was crazy, but we started dating one month before the whole Erasmus ended. Then we split. After being one month together, we split. He's Austrian, he came to Austria, I went to Portugal, and we were one and a half years living in different countries. I don't know how that worked. So then I came back to Portugal and I, did, and I had to choose a master thesis. The thing I wanted for my master thesis was field work, like proper field work, not just going one day to the beach, but like an intense field work opportunity because this is what I had not experienced yet and I really wanted to understand how I would react in such a situation and if I would enjoy it as much as I in my head thought I would. And I asked some professors of mine what kind, if they knew of someone who had such a project that would be adequate for a master's student and eventually someone suggested to me the supervisor of my master thesis, who worked in a group working with marine birds. And this person who suggested me this group told me that they were always on field work in some islands. And I was like, the project was super interesting. It wasn't a deserted, semi, almost deserted island in the middle of the Atlantic with marine birds. I'm not gonna explain this this whole adventure. I have a, just a video just about that if you want to check it out. 
Long story short, it was a great experience. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about my mm, how I work under certain conditions and I started really loving birds. From an experience point of view, this thesis was great. It was exactly what I wanted. I wanted to have some field work. I was two and a half months in this island or two months now, I can't remember anymore, but it was like a while. There was no internet, no phone connection, just you, nature, and the other people you were there with. But what I did miss during this, alt this time and that I started realizing throughout my studies was that I wanted to do something which was more applied to ocean conservation or that I, at least I could understand or in my mind say, okay, this is actually really important for this specific issue or this, we really need to understand this to help the ocean in some way. But after I delivered my thesis, I had uh, a couple of months until I had to defend it in front of a jury. So I ended up if you remember, I was dating an Austrian guy who I'm still dating now, so it worked. But I decided to come to Austria while during this month, three month period in which I had to wait to defend it in front of a jury, to come to Austria to be with my boyfriend, learn, learn a bit of German. Before I came, I was searching online and I found a group in with, with whom I'm working now that was work that works with marine microbiology. So I saw this group and I was like, well, this seems kind of, seems kind of cool. Uh, I do not have much experience uh, of working with microbial oceanography. I have some lab experience, molecular biology experience, microbial bio, microbiology experience, and I know a lot about the ocean. I'm just gonna try it out. So I contacted the, the someone working there and then they introduced me to the supervisor who then said okay if you want you can internship here for a couple of months there's people who need quite some help in the lab you can learn it from them and then you help them and i did that and it ended up with me kind of enjoying it more than i thought i would to be honest and learning a lot i learned so much during that period of time but at some point when i came back to portugal the professor who was the head of the department back then asked if I wanted a contract as an assistant. So to continue what I was doing and just helping people in the lab with their stuff. This was again, like another time in which I had to decide between a couple of things. Do I wanna leave Portugal where my family, my friends were, my surfing was, my ocean was, and come to Austria, which has no ocean, my family's not here, but has this really cool opportunity, a well-paid job, which in Portugal, would have never happened unfortunately and be with my boyfriend so in the end austria was my choice i stayed there for one year and during this year my supervisor said if you want to do a phd with us you can choose a topic within the stuff that we work with and we write a phd proposal and a project then apply to grants and you if you want you can work with us and i will be your supervisor <laughs> again another question and decision do i want to do a phd because what people will tell you is if you do not want to work in research, in academia or in science, doing a PhD is a waste of time. In the meanwhile, I've heard people say otherwise, even people who work in industry and work in as freelancer doing something other stuff related to science, but which is not science itself. However, back then this really started getting into my head again because I was again confused as to what I wanted. A lot of people telling me how difficult it is in academia to become a researcher, how less jobs there are after a PhD, how you are so badly paid and so many things people were telling me negative about this field that I started really doubting what I wanted to do. I wanted to work with the ocean, but also I looked around and I didn't see many other options. Like what could I do that is not a PhD that is related to the ocean and the environment? So I was like, okay, um, I'm just gonna write, uh, find a topic that I think I really like for my PhD. I write the proposal and if I get it, I will do it. Because I think it's also a great opportunity. This is a great lab. I'm enjoying what I'm doing, so I love learning, so maybe this is a great, great opportunity. So I did that. I started researching about like gaps in knowledge and things that I could potentially study that would I would be passionate about. And I found the topic that I'm working with now, which is 
back inter interaction with bacteria and plastic pollution in the ocean. Because when I wrote this project, there was almost nothing known. There were like only a couple of studies out on this subject. And I thought, wow, this is super, this is fascinating, interesting, and I can actually see why this is important, like in the immediate future to understand. This is a project I immediately started working on, my supervisor agreed, and I was like, this is awesome. And I really enjoyed writing this project. And I thought, this is a good sign. Like, I'm gonna enjoy doing this. There was field work involved, which was what I, what I also wanted. I, I had the chance to participate in two research expeditions, one in the Atlantic, the other one in the Pacific. I had the op opportunity to go to Croatia several times per year, also to do field work with my colleagues. It was great, we were great times. I really enjoyed those experiences. Basically, I decided, okay, I'm gonna do the PhD and what comes later comes later and I'll decide later what I do after. So the, then I started my PhD and here I am finishing it now, which means I will soon come to another decision point of my life. Do I wanna continue in academia or not? I decided to do this video because a lot of people ask me about what I think they should do regarding their career choices, their course choices, their bachelor or master's choices, and I always have a very hard time answering that. It depends on you. Your career, especially in a field like biology where or these more scientific fields, there really isn't a straight career path. There isn't like a formula that you should follow in order to be successful or happy within your job. It really depends on your preferences and what drives you and what you are passionate about. It's normal to have doubts. It's part of our life, especially now when there's just so many options out there. And if you start looking at the internet, it's so overwhelming how many op options you see and how many different fields and things you can do. It's normal to be confused, it's normal to have doubts. The best thing you can do, I, in my opinion, is just, this is gonna sound cheesy and really unhelpful, but it's just do what feels right. Thinking, okay, what do I imagine myself doing? If I look at Marie in the future, what is the Marie in the future that I wanna see? And work towards that goal. Ultimately, even if things don't go exactly as you expect, which they won't, by the way, spoiler alert, it never, they never do. You can never know if the other option would not have even been worse. And if you had gone the other option and that option had gone bad, then you, you would think back and think, this was not even what I wanted to do and now everything went bad. So I should have always have st tried the other thing, that's what I wanted to do. So it's always better to do what feels right for you and what you feel you're passionate about and that will make you happy. I lost track of all the things I said already. <laughs> do I regret? studying marine biology, do I look back and regret any of my choices? No, I love where I am right now. Even though my contract will finish in August and I have no idea what I'm gonna be doing next year, I'm happy. I'm happy where, with where I am. I really enjoyed my journey until here. I really enjoy science and I'm happy I chose to do the PhD because I realized that I really enjoy having a project, having a question or a problem finding or, or f trying to make up a plan to solve that problem, go through with that plan and finally get your answer. That's so satisfying. I enjoyed the experiences I had. I learned a lot also from the bad experiences I had. I can look back at my 20s and say, did I do everything perfectly? No, definitely not. Would I change anything? No, I mean, there's things if I would do, would do now, I would probably do different, obviously. I'm older and I'm not proud of everything I did, but ultimately, I, I, I'm, I'm, my conscience is clear that given the tools I had back then and the knowledge I had back then and my circumstances back then, that for me back then, I did the choice that back then I thought were the best choices. So yeah, don't forget to have fun as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like it if you liked it. If you want to watch more marine slash ocean slash marine biology related content, don't forget to subscribe. Check my Instagram and my Twitter if you want to. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.